Hello everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are watching us. Welcome to the Bridge Writers. And uh, in this new edition, we are going to discuss a very interesting subject, uh, very important, very relevant, self-care. So this self-care dynamic approach to integral health will be presented by uh, the speakers, our invited speakers and writers of uh, the book. So we have Fernanda Cabral Schweitzer and Mariana Cabral Schweitzer. Um, let me introduce them for you. So Fernanda, uh, they're both Brazilian, born in Florianópolis, state of Santa Catarina. Fernanda was born in September the 20th, 1981, and she currently resides in Foz do Iguaçu, so that's the state of Paraná in Brazil. She is a physician, a specialist in occupational medicine from the Brazilian Medical Association and National Association of Occupational Medicine, and a graduate in medicine by the Federal University of Santa Catarina, the UFSC. She has been the manager of the Occupational Medicine Division at Itaipu Binational since 2009. So that's one of the biggest hydroelectric plants, right? A big project, binational, uh, between uh, Brazil and Paraguay. Um, she has been a manager there of the Occupational Medicine Division. And uh, she has been a volunteer of Consensiology since 1999. A teacher since 2001, and she currently uh, volunteers with the International Association for the Expansion of Consensiology, the IAC. And Mariana, uh, she was born in July the 4th, so that's the Day of Independence, right? <laughs> For some <laughs> in the United States, right? July the 4th in 1984, and currently she resides in the city of Sao Paulo in Brazil. She's a nurse and university lecturer with a postdoctorate school of nursing at the University of São Paulo. She earned a PhD in science, double degree, University of São Paulo and Catholic University of Portugal. And she has a master in nursing uh, from the Federal University of Santa Catarina. She specialized in acupuncture, you know, with the Faculty of Health Technology and the uh, CF, Shandong University, specialized in public health by the UFSC, and graduated in nursing by the UFSC as well. She is currently an assistant professor at the Department of Preventive Medicine at the Paulista Medical School at the Federal University of Sao Paulo, the UNIFESP. And she has been a volunteer of Consensiology since 2013, and teacher as well, Penta practitioner since uh, 2019. And she currently volunteers with UNICIN, which is the Union of International Consensiocentric Institutions. Both our speakers, they are authors of verbets for the Encyclopedia of Consensiology and uh, also of uh, many uh, articles for different consensus-centric magazines like uh, Consciencia, Intercambio, and Interparadigms. So here's a mini bio. <laughs> so now it's all up to you. We are very, very happy to have you here with us today. And um, I just want to mention one thing before we, we start. The book they wrote about the subject they are going to present today is already in English, is already published in English, and it's available in Amazon, in every country where Amazon is present. Okay, so it's all up to you, Fernanda and Mariana, welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Liliana. Thank you, everybody, for being here. We are very glad to for this invitation and to share with you our our research. Yes, um, it's great to be here and thank you so much. And it's good to see new faces and to share with us, with all of you, our process of writing. Maybe we can um, understand a little bit about yourselves, about self-care. And uh, they just posted on the link to our 
a book if you want if you're interested but if you don't want to buy no problem we'll share the link to our website where you can download for free the tools we will present and the self-care canvas the timeline too that we'll talk about during this presentation so please um enjoy and share with us our, your thoughts your experiences it'll be a great afternoon And I think we can start. Yes, is that okay? So um, I will share um, the presentation and me and Fernanda will both talk in some of the slides. But first we want uh, to explain to you a little bit that uh, we published this book in Portuguese last year. So last year we had this great experience. We have been uh, studying and talking about self-care in the last uh, five years. So this was the first project. And then what happened is in the beginning of the um, year, I was at, in Canada as a visiting professor in McGill University. And we thought it would be a great idea to bring this book to English because I was going there and we could share our thoughts and our ideas. So last year, we started this um, process of translating the material from Portuguese to English. So we started last year and it was a great journey we have um, our translators our team of reviewers and everybody was really uh, into this project because we had a timeline to finish the book right we had to run against time and end of the year we know everybody has lots of projects and then what happened is that we finished but we did not publish and that was no problem at all because I was there and everything worked. We did give some lectures about the book in English. So we tested the material, we tested some of the terms because it was interesting for us. We had in Portuguese, but when we translated to English, it gave the whole idea of what we wanted to mean. And we had all the specific terms of consensiology that we need to share and everything. So it was a very interesting work that we had this experience. And then this last um, April, we had the opportunity to finally have the book published in English. And we said we were in a trip because we were invited to participate in an international um, meeting. And then we brought the book with us. And that was the first time we had the book in English and presented to some people. And today we're here. So we just wanted to give you this brief a process in perspective of how it worked. So yes, we have all this material for you. And, and just things gonna... are happening fast. We were discussing before, and this is very interesting because uh, for sure this is a hot subject that needs to be taken care of now. Yes, now yes. is the time. And we went to India, and we we have the book with us there. And just to make a fair uh, re registration, this book uh, uh, about the glossary the glossary of consensological yeah. terms is a jewel. You are our heroes. Mm -hmm. Helped us very, very much with the translation. Yeah. <laughs> I, one of the participants, yes. The idea yeah. when, when we did this, this glossary, because we are working on the English thesaurus of consensiology, so they will have around 3,000 terms. But the idea was to publish this glossary first because uh, um, first we could help other translators. And then, you know, obviously for everyone interested, but the, our, my first concern was what about the translators? We need to help them, right, in any language because you have translations now that are being done, for instance, in Romanian that are done from the Portuguese and the English version of the books. So. Uh, it helps, right? That's the idea. It really does. It really does help. And so for you that didn't see the book yet, so then we have um, a, an image that represents the process of self-care, right? When you see the cover of the book, so we say it is like an robrus. So if you're not familiar with this term, it's like the snake that eats itself. So we understand the self-care process as this process of always, you know, re 
borning and we grow and visiting ourselves all the time so if you <laughs> happen to co to see the cover then we are sharing with you this process and everything so in our beginning of every presentation we always want to um, make a reflection in your opinion what is health and what is care for you so for us, this process is represented by this snake of flowers, of course, that eats itself and then always is, um, is starting again because this is our comprehension. But maybe for the people here, it's different or maybe it's very hard or maybe it's something that it's easy because they come from a family that is always worrying about the way they eat or the way they work out or the way they connect to themselves. And what is care, maybe you come from a family that is like from a big family, in the case, me and Fernando, we are from a big family. So our care is always with a lot of people. So when someone is born, everybody goes to their house and take care of the mother, of the baby, or maybe no. Give your opinion. Give your opinion. <laughs> Lots of Say opinions. what to do. You must do this. You must... No, don't, don't feel that way. Everybody has their own idea. Yes, yes. And so please, if you want to share or know, just write it down if you want to a little, you know, some words that represent to you what is health and what is care, because we will take you through a very brief journey of 5000 years of what is a healthcare process and what it means. So if you want to, we can have just one minute where you can, you know, write down or think about what is health and what is care for you. And if it is like part of your lifetime, you know, experiences and everything. Can I say uh, one of the ways of looking at, at uh, the concept of health, maybe right or wrong, I don't know. It's uh, could we consider health like the absence of a disease or it's a lot more than that. But, uh, you know, maybe no one is 100 percent healthy or 100 percent, you know, uh, uh, with 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 the pathology, so uh, we are very complex uh, people, right? Consciousness is very complex, and so care very, very for dominant. me, yeah, care is also for me. It's connected, in, it's connection, it's connected with with welcoming, with uh, warmth, with who, uh, and it goes far beyond respect and you know warmth regarding the other consciousness every everyone you know that's my view for this thing. thank you thank you for sharing with us liliana thank you so i see a few more people entering the room especially our grandma here please take a moment Paula, to look at her Paula, you can open your microphone and speak as well Paula is saying it's about balance Good, great. <laughs> One moment, we are gonna just speak in Portuguese for a moment. Olá, vovó. Our <laughs> grandma Rosina is here. Olá, vovó Rosina. Sorry, she's amazing. Our mom is with her too. Hi, mom. <laughs> <laughs> she's ninety-two years old and lots of every. So of cute. Yes, of care and uh, health we learned from our mom and our grandma. So it's very lovely they are here today. Thank you. Thank you. So okay. So I hope you had this time to think a little bit about what is health and what is care for you. And uh, balance is really means a lot as someone brought it. And also when uh, Liliana brings this idea of usually we understand health as the opposite of uh, disease. And then we understand that we need to be in this perfect state of disease free to be healthy. And this is something that is not always being like this. So we invite everybody to take a look at this timeline. So please don't be scared. We will talk about every of the every one of these time periods to see how this concept of health and care and disease have changed over time.
So when we look at antiquity, um, even before the known era and before we had this group of people and understand in Asia, like China or India, what is health and what is care, we have like 5,000 years ago, traditional Chinese medicine and Ayurveda medicine from India that they understand health and disease and care as a process, as a balance, as um, a period where we will be taking care with energy concepts and with the whole body structure. So in Ayurveda medicine, we have terms like doshas, where we understand people are different and the way they are structured, they will have some types of disease or other diseases. And in traditional Chinese medicine, the same way, if someone is more like a metal or it's more like um, earth, they have this concept where they understand diseases will be perform and diseases will appear because of this constitution. And then they will do acupuncture and diet and differences in the way they do exercise like yoga or traditional Chinese body mind workout like Tai Chi Chuan or Qi Kung. So they have this idea of your body and your mind and the social, the integral idea of your of body and health and care. So this is all time, but we still have these medicines today. But especially here in the not in the Asia, but when we come to Europe and especially um, Greek times, we have this magical thinking idea of health and care. So we still connect with this idea from Asia. But when we start with the very strong idea of religion and health as good and disease as bad and as a punishment, then we start to understand the disease as a really bad problem and something that we, we should fight all the time. And it means you're not a good person or you're not doing something right. And that's why you're having a disease. And this was very strong for a period of time. And here we have an image of like the plague where people would use these masks and in these masks we would have like herbs that would help not to be contaminated with this disease. But when we have this opposite of style of understanding health and disease is when we are in the Renaissance. So we have this idea of the man as a machine, but no head, right? So we come from a way where we connect everything and then we have this idea of disease as bad or as a punishment. And then we decide that no, the man, the, the person is a machine and should behave perfectly, not to be doing something wrong with this machine, not to be having diseases. So we have this change over time of how we understand diseases. And it would be great to have this idea of machine because then we just change a part or delete a body part that is not working so well and then we're healthy. And it is very connected with this idea of um, a panacea that we have from the Greek, right? Where you take a pill and then you be perfect and disease free. But we know that is not enough. And especially with single case models and the infectious diseases, we have been seeing they are not enough to understand why we have chronic diseases or we have insomnia or we have other kind of issues like stress. Why don't we can, you know, take a pill and then the stress is gone for our lives. So we have been seeing, especially in contemporary age, uh, multi cause models and the epidemiological transitions of people that we are not to get infection disease so much, especially before COVID, but we have chronic diseases and we need to have models to integral care and to understand this body as an integral being. And then we see, especially from WHO, the World Health Organization, traditional medicine is strategy. And in Brazil, if you're not from Brazil, we have policies to include complementary therapies in our national health system, especially from 2006. And this idea of complementary medicine, if we go right back to the beginning of our timeline here, where we try to understand again, the integral health and how we need to take care of every aspect, not only human health, but the animal health and the planet health.
everything as one health and we need to look at everything together so sometimes we like to share this timeline because people usually stops at one of these period of time and we understand as a single case model or understand health and the body as a machine and sometimes it's very difficult to take care of ourselves if we stop in this timeline we are in the contemporary age and we have many practices so we have this list of the nine most common integrative medicines and contemporary practices complementary therapies that we have in the world so we have acupuncture of one of the most used complementary therapies in the world. And people still ask me, does it work? Does it really work? So we have been doing this project since 2019 for the Brazilian government to share the evidence, the clinical studies that show how good and efficient acupuncture is. And also, we have Ayurvedic medicine being very much used in the world in chiropractic, this practice where you organize, you know, your back and your, your body. And phytotherapy, when you use herbs and medicine from plants. So we have been using this a lot. And homeopathy, just to cite a few of these therapies, this uh, list of practices that have been published from WHO in this global report on traditional and complementary medicine. And in this table, you can look at which are the complementary therapies and traditional medicine that are included for free for everybody that is interested on in having this practice in the national health system in Brazil. So we have this big policy, it's been growing since 2006. And today we have over 29 complementary therapies included in our national health system. So we present to you this idea of how these medicines have been included in national health systems, especially in Brazil, because there has been a growing body of knowledge of integral medicine and also about consciousness and this is where i pass to fernanda so she can share with us this growing body of knowledge of how we take care of ourselves can i add something mm -hmm. fortunately uh, this this line of thinking this line of acting about uh, health uh, is is also uh, it's it's growing in england it's also like that in the uk it's also like that in the national uh, health uh, service you can you can have uh, you know a, you know these type of therapies like for instance if you have if you go to a, a psychologist even in they they tell you oh look but wouldn't you like to do art therapy uh, but you know uh, so there's lots of uh, you know you can do acupuncture you can do different things so this is very good that the, in some countries at least the national uh, health systems are thinking uh, you know are thinking in the right direction i think thinking in the right way i suppose right it's very good yes and if if we want to uh, have if and if you have some questions or want to to share something you any of you can use the chat or can open up your microphone and then we we could talk okay and this liliana you brought is very important because it's not uh, only about uh, what practices do we have access but how do we comprehend health because when i use another and when i use acupuncture i comprehend health with the perspective of china's medicine when I use Ayurvedic, I comprehend health with, uh, how do you say, Indian? Indian, Indian, Indian. Indian medicine. Yeah. Uh, so it, it begins to change our perspective of that timeline Mariana just presented. Because if my comprehension of health stopped in the Middle Ages, I have 500 years to get uploaded about and it uh, it, it looked like a joke but it isn't it's true we still uh, perceive uh, when we have diseases we apply different concepts in our comprehension of what's going on with us in this in that moment and it's important to uh, have it consciously to be aware of this process 
because sometimes the uh, the disco discomfort discomfort or this suffering of the disease is not about the limitations it really applies to our lives it's about the feeling of not being okay of being a bad people of being wrong about in any aspect of our lives this could be even more uh, uh, evil in uh, our perception than the disease itself so yeah. it's a big change I, I think that sometimes you, when you have a disease this is the last thing when when you feel it in your physical body right but sometimes it's like a red flag for me i call it red flag this is calling the attention to something that is not well and uh, and probably what is not well in is is not it's not just it's in your psychosome it's in your mental soul it's in the way you're thinking it's in the way you're feeling right right and and maybe we could change this idea of uh something not well to something is changing neutral not bad it could be homeostatic i could be changing for good i could be uh, experimenting something to have some renewal in my body or in my emotions in like a catharsis you know you must take it off in somehow some way this body is very primitive he is not so advanced oh just change it of uh, you just change and get better no there are a lot of primitive processes we live inside it so more being more neutral helps more openness to this comprehension but this is where, where health connects with consciousness because as mariana began to to say uh, the body cannot the body knowledge of consciousness is growing a lot and this both thing could grow together our our awareness our consciousness our consciality and our comprehension of this uh, primitive body <laughs> we express ourselves in this dimension so we're not so advanced at all because we need this primitive okay but don't tell everybody it's our shape but our it's, a, it's a good thing also to learn a little bit more about the soma i remember one once in london when i had to go to i decided to go to the osteopath and uh, the first thing that i noticed is that he knew about energy the first thing he did was a uh, an energy reading and he knew that i knew that he knew and he said you know what i'm what i'm doing yes i do and then he said you are very connected with your after you know examining this and that so you're very connected with your body yes i am i know myself quite well and so you know it's good to to know a little bit more to be more aware right self-aware of everything and and we have these insights if we stop to listen it's very interesting because it's already there dancers are sometimes they are inside and when we look for this uh, consciousness uh, process the conscienciology itself then we see there are so many people and therapies studying energetic practices we could use uh, our conscientious paradigm that uh, uh, in a very strict way we could say it's allosomatic, multidimensionality, and multi existentiality. Uh, it's not uh, something we just we uh, analyze and study. So we, we, mu we may have a lot of ideas and insights from other cultures, like Buddhism, for example or Chinese medicines, or um, indig uh, how's indigenous medicine. Again, indigenous, yeah. 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 So they are really uh, connected with this intelligence of body, of nature. And in conscienciology, we also have the concept of conscientious health that in our proposal is the natural condition dynamic state of equilibrium 
our quality of the consciousness regarding its personal well-being, holosomatic homeostasis, and the harmonious relationship with the holotocin, constituting a resource for self-evolution. So it's a resource everybody has. Oh, how do I do to go faster in my evolution? Look for your body, look for your feelings, look, how do we connect with the holotocin? There's a lot to do in this way. And if, please, Mary, uh, and we go further, the self-care itself uh, are the actions developed by a person for the benefit of their own lives. So all of us have self-care practices. It could, they could be more evolved or more basic, but all of us have some, and then we can a consciously organize then the self-care practices for our life, health, well-being, and to contribute to our development and our aging. That is very important because we hope everybody has passed through the experience of aging. But aging isn't easy. Aging is changing, is losing something. You you gain uh, more. A perspective of life, more comprehension, and you lose capacity, physical capacity. So how do we do this balance? As Paula said, <laughs> health is a balance, right? And we propose uh, self-care as a tri triad with three parts. First one is self-knowledge. What do I want? How do I work? How my body uh, interact with the uh, environment. Oh, it's cold, so I have to be more protected. Oh, I don't work that. I don't think so well in hot places, in hot climates. It's important to to comprehend. How, ah, when I eat this kind of food, of if I drink cold water, hot water, how do I express myself? How does it change my my body? And secondly. Then the cosmovision of, of health, a critical view of health. What is this health they are offering me socially? What's the comprehension of the predominant health? The, do I agree with this style? What do I agree? What I do not agree? Uh, what else could I use that is not uh, easily offered, but I can find out, I can look for this. We have an online life now. And then the good use of these resources. So I know myself, I know the health world, and I use the best resources to my needs. This is a balance we can look for. Can I, can I talk about one more anecdote uh, that I think is interesting? Well, again, when I was living in, in, in London, there was this thing that when you go to the doctor, to the national health system, right? And you have, uh, and I would go with Elise, okay, here is the symptoms, da, 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 da. So, very well. So, what am I missing? What can I do? And it's a good thing that, okay, you have different options and, and this, the, the person can choose. You, this is what is on offer, A, B, C, D. What do you want to do? And then you do that. So this is one of the things that I think it's, it's interesting, right? When you have, mm -hmm. uh, when they tell you, look, this is what is on offer, there are options and it's up to you to choose, right? This is one thing that is very no. interesting. It, this is uh, also presenting our canvas. We are going to show it to you. Uh, there's a point of this process. You, you must ask yourself, mm, what are my options? Not what uh, easily I ha have access, but really, if I open up the options, what would I use? This is very important, Liliana. And right. we have, uh, I had also the experience when I went to that osteopath, for instance, he already combined osteopathy with acupuncture and homeopathy. So he did the three things, in, you know, he went there. I went there and it lasted the long time effect for one year. It was great. So I went there just once a year. 
just for to do a you know calibration kind of thing. That's true. Uh, it's sometimes we'd like to have a medicine or a practice that attends all our needs, but it's very hard. Uh, we usually we we have better results when we get we combine options. This is what you say, and it's true. For especially for chronic diseases or diseases that are more uh, connected to our recycle pro recycling processes. And in a way, in the next slide, we will see. Uh, when we look forward, sometimes we need to look back also. So this is a timeline of health disease care. There is offer that you can get, we can download for free in our uh, blog, in our site that is already in the chat. And it's a, a exercise to reorganize, find out new meaning of the experiences we live to look forward in a in a new way. Oh, thank you, Mary. And so it's a, it's a process of self-reflection about how was my childhood, adolescence, adulthood, for some of us after the age and our age. And there are some questions you can ask for yourself. Uh, how would you describe your health condition in general? Then you write it down. What illnesses or problems can be reported? What have you lived? What medical practice and procedures have you been used? Have you, have, have you had already been presented to integrated practice in the young age? It would be a, a very important tool to, to have a more openness view of the life and health. Uh, what were the most significant memories from that time? And how do I see myself at this stage in my life? It could, this question is, is, can be used in the future. How do I see myself in the third age, in the fourth age? What do I expect? Oh, I expect to be really healthy, with no disease. Bah. Review, please. Because <laughs> aging is a process of losing something, too. Because you need to balance. If you gain, you lose, you know? And please, Mary, if you go further, uh, this process of reviewing our history is connected to our proposal of method to self-care. It's called FEMA method for self-care. It has four steps, find, embrace, move, and again, and it's cyclical, never ending process uh, in this life. And I, until we know in all lives, in physical or extraphysically. Okay. And let's, let's find out each stage. Uh, first stage is find. Find out symptoms, discomforts, feelings, anxieties, diseases, illnesses, what is not good at all uh, at, in any aspect of your life? What bothers you? What's not okay? What's just uh, is, is comfort? And, and you write it down. Oh, I think this is not okay. This is what I, sometimes when you write it down, you discover it's not exactly the disease you don't like. It's the uh, self guilty about this disease you don't like. The disease is okay. It's not so limiting, but the idea of being punished, of being uh, out of our proactive in some way, of having some kind of disconnection with our purpose is a problem. So try to find out what is not okay. And then you find out also your wants, interests, desires and so it could be used for a a positive stage of health 
I'm okay, I have no problem at all, but I could be more. Da -da -da. This is a desire you can write it down. And you find out also health professionals who can help in this process, models of health, more health rationalities or systems you can apply to guide your care. So some in some models, if I take the same disease, I, I have a flu in, oh, thank you, Juvenal, no, no problem at all. Uh, it, I have a flu in our uh, occidental modern medicine, maybe your immunity is not okay. Maybe you have exposed it to a virus. But if you look for uh, Germanic medicine, maybe your body is renewing something that you have before. Even heart diseases like a cancer could be uh, uh, followed by a uh, virus disease. So it's very interesting how we can look not be a Pollyanna, how they say this in English, a Pollyanna view, but look in different perspectives, like an exhaustivity process of find out 50 ways of comprehending your problem, and then you'll be more uh, prepared to face it in a better way. And also find out help groups, virtual communities, and people related to the same problem of interest. It helps so much when you share your experiences, right? In a different perspective. And you, you listen to somebody with the same problem of yours. This is the first step. This is self-knowledge, right? And the second step is embrace. But I have a disease, I don't want this disease. How do I embrace it? Oh. This is the challenge because we embrace so many things. We must or we, need, we have more results when we embrace the problems we have. It's part of ours. It's not something apart, out of my, my life. No, it's me itself. It's my personality, my body, my choices, my past inside me. So when you embrace and you don't try to cut it off some diseases, it changes your perspective. Embrace, comprehend, understand the symptoms, changes, discomforts, diseases, insights, desires, without judgment or blame, in order to understand oneself and foster self-care. So it includes ethics, gratitude, sometimes uh, when we uh, go down deep in the experience of disease, we find out gratitude of that disease, how it could be possible, but it is. I'm so grateful because I could look for my life and have some adjustments I thought I didn't need, but this disease helped me to per perceive. And the compassion and forgiveness too. So. Then the third step, I'm, I'm talking a lot, Mariana, so you, if you want to, please uh, compliment. Uh, so the third step, oh, the third step is not cure. No, there's no cure here, okay? It's move, movement, changing something, rearrange, recycle, to produce some change, to experiment. Uh, as our disbelief principle we use so much in conscientiology, it's a, it's a process of experimentation, of changing something to change symptoms, difficulties, discomforts, illness. Né? Change starts by choosing new goals and targets in relation to the five health perspectives, a physical, energetic, emotional, mental, and spiritual or parapsychic uh, perspective. Yes, Regina, that's very important. Don't believe in anything, not even what we will hear in this talk. Have your own experiences. It's very important. So uh, we have by 
Until now, find, embrace, and move. We don't know if it's get, going to get the cure because we are consciousness. We have a lot of things, a lot of time to find out this recycle and this new aspects of ourselves. And the first step is again. What do you mean with again? Again, eh? begin again. Because, okay, uh, in the third step, I find out a new balance. It's, my life is okay with that. I have some, uh, in my case, for example, I have, uh, how to say this, ATM problem. Mm. You help me, please. Uh, ATM is... Uh, it's the temporal mandibular syndrome. So when we... Yeah, it, it I aches. think it's this. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, when you open a lot, it's difficult to close. Yeah, I have that hurt. as well. <laughs> I, I, I have uh, this hurt, hurts my head, hurts my, my neck. And then I have this problem. It's a one of my chronicities. Uh, and sometimes in my life, it's balanced. Okay, it's not hurting too much. I know what makes me feel better or worse. And I manage it but sometimes i'm in the middle of a new uh, challenge of a new process of a new recycle and it gets worse again so again if it gets worse again we need to go again to the process and we go deeper in this self-knowledge process to find one of, and and the, one of the things that i found out uh, exactly about some of our physical problems you know some of our diseases or something is that there are cycles you know we go through different cycles you know the thing can come up again although a little bit different but you know and and you find out that these things have cycles so kind of okay i'll be prepared for that <laughs> you know if it yeah. happens again yeah well <laughs> you know let's see exactly that it's not in once if it was an easy recycle problem that we could just make it fast we weren't dealing with this for so long so it's more probably probably this kind of problem like mine it's more connected with my personality it doesn't change fast so it's okay to have to make the process again it's part it's the biological it's paraphysiological to have to face it again as though it's not very pleasant but it's it's how it works and to try to help you all to apply this method we have organized a canvas. Uh, this canvas is also on our website for download, for free download. And in this, we have the four steps, find, embrace, moving again, uh, with some questions to help you, to guide you, to find out your own answers. So what feelings, emotions, illnesses do you want to address? What therapies can help me? So when Liliana said, oh, the, your options are A, B, C, D, the practice and therapies you can use, it's, it's here when we find out what therapies can help me and what processes or strategies don't seem to work. Mm, feel guilty, don't work. <laughs> so write it down, please right and embrace what's the meaning of this situation in my life a meaning in uh, in an uh, abstract way uh, how do i feel about that how do i connect what does it represent in my body in my life what are the limitations of the situations why it's not good what are the opportunities of the situations what could be good about it what changes can help me reach my goal in the move uh, stage mm -hmm. 
And what are the possible solutions for identifying situations? What can I use? And then I go and talk to other people and share. And because one of the problems of some diseases is it's very difficult to share. Because if I share, I'm showing I'm not so strong, I'm not so perfect, I'm not so special and complete as I, I would like to, right? So sharing is very important. And how do I measure the impacts of the changing I must implement? How do I measure? Oh, for, for example, in my case, uh, a zero, 10 scale of pain. How, how, how today is hurting for? When I go to my dentist, she asks me, oh, how, from zero to 10, how, the, how does it, is, is the discomfort or hurting now? Oh, four, five, seven, we can do this, right? And again, how, and again, Sage, how do I measure that I have reached my goal? Oh, I, I'm with two in this scale of pain, very good. I love two is good. Which signs show me it's time to start a new cycle? If I go to four for a week, four in the scale of pain for a whole week, probably I need a new cycle. It's a example, okay? But we have more examples, please, Mariana. Yes, um, it's very interesting because usually when we present the method, people would tell us, uh, oh, okay, so how do I organize what I have been doing? And usually people have been doing this in an intuitive way. Like they are doing this already. Maybe people that are here with us today, they're like, yeah, when I have something, I see what works and I see what not, does not work. And I try to uh, guide my, you know, way of treating myself. But what we try to help people with this self-care canvas is to include the second stage that is embracement. They usually, as Fernanda said, we try to cut it off our diseases. We don't want to understand what they mean in our life. We don't want them at all. We want this perfect state of not having any pain or any discomfort. And this is very, very challenging especially when, as she said, involves um, forgiveness as something that we don't understand as health. Okay, so forgiveness is it's gonna influence my state of health. And what we have here, especially in Brazil, we have the, the forgiveness workshops and people get together and they talk about what is forgiveness to them and what does it mean? And what we have from clinical studies that when we forgive, we change the way our brain works. So it's very interesting how we connect all this data and all this evidence to show how one step of the method is very important and very, very difficult. So to try to help you, maybe when we finish this talk will be like, okay, maybe I'll try this, or maybe I'll try this with someone that I take care, maybe with a parent or with a child and maybe with a colleague. So to help to see all these steps, we have a completed canvas. So maybe you feel more, you know, uh, invited to do your own canvas by seeing this case. And this is a very common case we have been seeing practice both me and Fernando have been uh, in practice and having many patients over these years last 10 years and one common um, um, problem people talk about is headache okay probably you here have been having this problem or in a way that is very disturbing or not. But in this case, our patient, the feeling, the emotion, what she wanted to address was headache. And she knew a list of therapies that helped her before. So she did went to a neurology uh, specialist. She did do physiotherapy, acupuncture, shiatsu. So you see, she did not stay only in the traditional, um, the way we understand medicine here in Brazil, for example. Oh, I'm just going to go to the doctor and then I'll get some meds and then I'll treat my headache. No, she tried to open up her mind and she did see something that did not work, especially medicines that help her sleep, but did not manage the headache crisis. So it would uh, end up that crisis, that headache, but the crisis would continue showing up. So it was difficult for, and for many years. Can I just say something? I think it's uh, uh, 
in that phase already uh, shows how maybe you have been doing even from past lives i don't know for instance <clears throat> when i have a problem the first thing that i think is how can i solve it without going without taking medicine doing anything acupuncture this that i think what could solve the problem without me having to take any chemicals that have secondary you know side effects and stuff like that but in my family uh it's been a little bit like that because my 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 grandmother on on my mother's side was was um, a nurse and my grandfather was a doctor and his specialty was pharmaceuticals and they had a pharmacy together in that time where uh, everything was prepared in the pharmacy right and it was all about herbs teas <laughs> and things like that so he also wrote a, a dictionary a huge dictionary with all the diseases a human being can have with all the symptoms the diagnosis and the treatment and so every time that he, anyone in the family had something we would go to the dictionary oh that's what it is okay that's what we do so we always uh, you know not all my mom was one to take chemicals but not me immediately i think what can i think that is you know what can i do that is additional that is you know complementary because what we think today is complementary medicine is actually classical medicine back in the east you know in those countries they've been doing this for ages with good results and no side effects as well in many things right so yes and a different and, way and, of looking and here in the americas indigenous have been working with many um, you know uh, plants and herbs from the forest and from their nature and they have been applying this and uh, somehow it is today a uh, much easier way than the dictionary, right? You can go to the internet and then you can go to websites from people to, who have this disease, as Fernanda said, where they share their experiences, what they have tried or not, and the side effects and the information, good clinical studies that shows the importance of that medicine. So in some cases, a headache can be an imbalance of some problem that this person has, and then the medicine will be very important so every, everybody would have their own experience about it so it's interesting that we can have our own and see about other people's and usually this period it's a very uh, distressing sometimes because you can go to a physician and then you don't have the best experience I, I'm sure people here have been doing this and then sometimes you go to another physician and then you see oh my this is perfect and we really connect and we have this way of understanding disease and health in the same way so I will continue with this physician here that's okay we don't need to stay with a professional that we don't see it's it's very in common ideas with we need ourselves. to connect right we always we need, need to, to connect. connect if it connects then you are going to get good results if you don't connect you you need to change to a different, uh, it a different is. practitioner and it is uh oh i need someone that is very technical or i need someone that has the technical abilities but also human and patient center care that is something that we seem so important these days especially when we had like this pandemic where we still need to understand everything and then we need someone that we can talk about new research so so this can be frustrating sometimes so we we know that this step it can be frustrating because it it makes us vulnerable and we need to expose our problem to one professional and then to another one and sometimes we are tired and we are in pain so sometimes we need to balance this step because if we work too much and we stress too much we will just want to end it and then no disease no more and then the second step is fundamental to this process so what the meaning in this case of this patient that had headache what the meaning of the headache she had in her life so she wrote that i noticed that when i get the headache it's when i'm overwhelmed or don't i or when i don't sleep enough so she needed to understand for her what was happening when she had the headache and the limitations well she couldn't and she couldn't work she needed to slow down her routine but it also had an opportunity that helped her review her work and sleep routine so maybe as fernanda said at the end 
it, it, we can be grateful to our problem because maybe I was overwhelmed. Maybe I had too much stuff to do and I didn't say no to my boss or my tasks. And I was getting my personal time to finish my work tasks. So it, is, it was something important for this patient in this step of embracement where she opened herself to understand when what was happening and what it meant for her. And then she could do the movement step in a way that could really mean something to her. So she started to do some changes. So the changes that help her reach her goal that was to end the had the crisis would be to put a time frame for the working a maximum of eight hours a day and is sleeping at least seven hours a night some people can look at this go and be like well i do that but for some people this is very challenging if they work too much or if they work in a place where they need to be available all the time or if they have a sleeping routine because they have small children or they have um different um time to work and they have to wake up very early. And so you need to find out for yourself. And then in this case, it was very important for her because she could uh, understand a cause and effect between her sleep and her headaches. And then she brought some possible solutions for the situation. Would be reorganize her agenda, negotiate deadlines. So maybe sometimes she saw that to, in order to be accepted or in order to be liked, she'd be doing deadlines that were very short, that didn't work for her. And then she had to be working late at night and didn't sleep so well. And then she was tired and she could not sleep. So watch lots of TV. And then she see that the TV did not help her sleep because sometimes she saw something that was very, you know, um, awakening. So last TV before bed was one of her um, issues that she wanted to change. And then how did she measure that? So she had to start a diary to record her work sleep hours and record the beginning and ending of her day crisis because, you know, she started using an app and her cell phone that helped her, uh, you know, record this and compare the headache crisis with proportion of work sleep. Sometimes a professional, a health professional can help one to do that. People have been doing this before, but then she started doing it by herself. And then in the again phase, she started to see how she measured that she reached her goal. So she saw a reduction in the number of the crisis. So this was very good for her and she started to finish her daily tasks it was not something that at the end of the day she'll be like oh i need to do this this and this and i need to work more so this was something that really relaxed her because she saw the things being finished and being done and she saw herself as a productive person and not so much suffering and finishing stuff um, before time because that was impossible for her for anyone and then which signs show her to start a new cycle. So she was okay, no more had a crisis that she did not see coming or understand. And, but when she noticed that when she wake up, she was tired or was too stressed during the day or another condition that could be influencing her headache, that will not be the sleep routine, work routine anymore. So should be open to that if that happens. So that's when she would start to need, uh, start to need, to, need to start a new cycle for her, a new self-care canvas. And why do we like to share can I, with you? Can I add something? Um, yes. I think some of the things that you are showing in this example, they seem very simple, uh, but they are actually very difficult for some people. I was thinking of myself, when you work too much, too many hours, too many days, da, 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 some of the slowing down is difficult. And so when I get a problem, uh, you, you also brought a, 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 a word that's very important, that is the forgiveness, the self-forgiveness or something. Because when I get sick, the first uh, thing that I get is irritated. Why did you allow yourself to get sick? <laughs> kind of. Why did you lower your defenses? Why, <laughs> you know? And that gets me irritated. So I never thought about that forgiveness thing, for instance, you know. So yeah, and, and it's difficult sometimes, you know, to slow down, for instance, okay, oh, only work only these hours per day. 
very strange kind of thing. Yeah. So not Thank so you. easy. Thank simple. you, Lillian. Mm -hmm. No, it's very simple, as you say, because it's like a diary or hours to do something or not. But it's very complex because it demands for you to understand why do I work so much? Do I need to pay the bills? Do I need to take care of children? Do I need to, you know, why is this happening? Or if I can find a balance, as our colleague brought in the beginning of our presentation, to understand this health as balance and to understand that it's not only so people sometimes have this idea of, oh, self care is going to a spa or, you know, eating a detox juice in the morning. It's, it's very deep inside looking yourself to understand why do I accept so many tasks is understanding that I have a team that I can, you know, divide the task or work more in my group, or in my team. But this demands a lot of us. So it is simple, but it's also very complex. So it is an invitation that we have for all of you to do this if you want to work on your self-care. But what we have been doing since the launch of the book was to share some of these stories with um, many people that are interested in self-care. And these are some of the pictures of uh, workshops and uh, people that have access to the self-care canvas or have access to the book. And we have been teaching undergrad students in our university to help them learn about self-care. And what is, was very interesting for us is that when we talk about it, sometimes people is like, oh, I really needed to slow down and I need to use this now. Or sometimes like, oh, I just had this disease. I was losing my hair and I didn't know what to do. So I did all of these steps. And then I saw that when I understood myself, and what it meant for me to have hair, then I could do the changes because before that, I just wanted to not have this problem or just got angry with my parents because my parents bold and I don't want to be bold, you know? So it opened up themselves to understand this idea of care and health in a way that you can, you know, work consistently and start a new cycle every time. And of course, uh, usually for healthcare professionals, we are not invited a lot to the self-care. We are very good at taking care of other people, but usually we don't look at ourselves as, you know, someone that really needs this. So that's why we started so much to do this. And next month we start a course where we will work self-care with health workers to help them and to, you know, guide them through this process where we're presenting the methods. So we want to share, we wanted to share with you what this experience is. This is very important because, you know, what this movement that you are doing to, to going out is so it's not something that is happening just in consensiology or something. You're going out and you're bringing this, all this information. It's fantastic, really. Congratulations on both of you, you know. Thank you. We had a great experience last year where we, we did the self-care work uh, mini course in the uh, Parascientific Week. So we had over 50 uh, participants and we did the campus with them and then we did um, guide them through the steps and then they had this homework for themselves and they will be like, oh, I'm going to start this tomorrow with my mother or, oh, I'm going to do this and bring this, uh, oh, you know, answer to my physician and then I will talk to them about it. So it was interesting to see this movement um, inside uh, our consensology groups and uh, events, but also in the university or in the workers' uh, groups and then see this as something that we can really work on and this is our book marker that we did when we brought the book to india in this event that we talked in the beginning and then it was like a special because tell us a little bit more about your experience in india oh of course we had um calipino that where we shared most of our stories in India, me and Fernanda, but uh, we had this great experience. So sure, uh, we did this self-care canvas. So I'm just going to end the presentation because this is where we want it. And then we can share our images and open the microphone. And just to finish, this is our website. And this is a QR code that you can just point it out. And then you will have access to the material we just talked about. 
I'm just gonna stop my sharing here and then we can share stories about India. We had this great- Just, um, just before that, let me just say, uh, tell everyone, everyone is invited. We are going to do an official launch of the book in English on the 23rd of July. So in more or less in a month time, we will be together again. We will talk deeper uh, about you know the experiences uh, they both had writing this book, right? but share as much as you can ask as much as you can <laughs> please feel free everyone true and it's a special day because the 24 of july it's international self-care day so we chose this day because we want to you know uh, talk about self-care during the whole weekend and talk about people's experiences about self-care and how they are doing and how do they understand health and care and how difficult it is sometimes what tools they have been using and we that's why we went to india to share so uh, our book and to share to share some of our ideas and especially because in in the beginning of the book we present all these practices we talked about so we talk about the 29 uh, integrative practices complementary therapies that are included in brazil national health systems and they include many of the practices that are in the ayurvedic medicine yoga meditation and of course ayurvedic medicine that it has over 200 practices it's a millionaire um, understanding of health and care so we just had um, this presentation in the book of these practices because as we said sometimes when we are in the find uh, step it's difficult if, if you have never heard about traditional chinese medicine ayurvedic medicine and then you go to the internet and then sometimes you're like i don't know this website is it really it, it, it will work for me so that's why we we bring this information in the book so it's in english now so if you don't know some of the practices we talked about in the presentation, it is available in the book. So that's why we were invited to go. And me and Fernando, we had a great time in India, especially because of the food, because of the people we talked about and the conference. They just launched uh, the first global center of traditional medicine with the support of WHO, World Health Organization, and Ayurv Ayurvedic um, Council in India. So they have a ministry that includes many complementary therapies, including Ayurvedic, homeopathy, yoga, meditation, Unani medicines. So they have this ministry. They are in, investing $250 million over 10 years to bring all these practices, all the evidence, why they work, how they work, how people could use these for their self care and so it's a little bit of what we experienced there and fernanda loved the food so she can share about everything she ate and love it everything all the pepper and i've seen the spice. photos i've seen the photos right the food is exceptional and maybe there's some connection there from past lives as well right <laughs> and, this and photo then, you can see and i loved also the perspective they live as they don't have so much uh, occidental practice as we do uh, they uh, live a more fluid life uh, with no control and this is uh, when we see when we see this perspective of no no control in an occidental place is one thing but when we go and everything works in a non-controlled flu, uh, flu uh, way and you are the only one trying to control it it changes your perspective it changed mine it was really valuable i i'm very grateful for these experiences and because me and mariana as you see we are schweizer we have a german uh, or uh, education german background and german background and, and then yeah, of course our, our family are in brazil for a long time but these things still stay with us these ideas and going to this different way and uh, what more what uh, was more important to me is this fluid world works people don't get sick living a no controlled life 
It's English possible. Amazing. <laughs> you know, because violence. they, they yes. get more in the flow, right? In the flow yeah. of life itself. My right? temple mandibular problem is could have a solution. <laughs> Maybe I don't need to control so much. Uh. <laughs> um, and um, tell us tell us a little bit about how it was uh, just you know shortly but how it was to to work together and and write a, a book with four hands two heads yeah the importance also of putting uh the information that we already have that we have already gathered in writing right the importance of that it's not it's not an easy uh, work even even for us who are sisters who have already re written so many articles uh, because we have different backgrounds um, i'm a physician mariana is a nurse i'm in the um, in our working companies mariana is in the university so uh, even though we have some backgrounds in common we have different perspectives but complementary ones and i think the idea and you will tell us if it's it worked or not is when you read the book you don't know which which one wrote which chapter because that isn't i wrote then she received the, the chapter and then comp complement and give it back to me and then we we go this in a process of construction so it is it is possible it's not it's not uh, easy, but it's challenging, very challenging, but it is possible to write a book, you know, more than one person together, right? Yeah. If there's the, the affinity is there, the complementarity is there, the, uh, the, the goal is there, the, uh, the, the target audience that you want to assist is, is you know, is the same. So um, it is possible, right? It's another way of thinking about writing, yeah, doing things but, together. Yeah. And I'm curious, Liliana, if people have some question. Yeah. Yes, Wanna yes, uh, Paula, Paula, Paula can or... just, mm -hmm. just, uh, yeah, ask, ask away. Hi, Fernanda, and hi, everybody, and Mariana, thank you so much for uh, sharing your experience. I would like to know, I, 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 uh, I like very much your methods. I'm, I'm reading your book and I, I take a look, I took a look at your blog and your, your site. Um, in, in our society, the patients is expect the doctor to give, a, give us a pill to cure our illness. Um, they don't see themselves in the process of the self-cure and self-care. Uh, how do you see in your practice uh, the whole and the development of the patients in the process of this the self contact and the self care. Do you see uh, any development because uh, the people needs to do in the process of self healing? Uh, and how do you do you see uh, this whole of the the patients? I think if I got a question. I think it's a awakening process. Uh, some people will look for uh, integrative therapy just because uh, the typical medicine fail with her or with him. And in, in the first step, usually it, it's how it works. I tried the typical way and then I discovered it doesn't work for me in some aspects then i look for something else but in this process uh in the next time or in next in the future i will consider to from the beginning connect uh, the more occidental medicine more typical with this integrative perspectives and even for the pro the professionals because we get frustrated, I have already got frustrated with trying to help someone, making everything that is in the book 
I got perfectly. Oh, so you get the right diagnosis and then you apply the right therapy and it didn't work. What happens? So we as professional, uh, professionals also uh, have our uh, stimuli to look for something different when it doesn't work with our patients or with ourselves and professional health professionals are really getting very stressed nowadays so they they are more open it to this uh, uh, experiences so i, I think uh, it's uh, any per, each person will have their own time in this process of discovering life itself it's connected to the, the the things inside mary help me yeah sure um this happens a lot and when we look at the studies they they always ask why did you come to acupuncture why did you do something else why did you go to self-healing clinics and this kind of approach oh because of fail of tip commencing but also i'm in the university and of course uh, the university where i am from it is a very a very great university and has been doing research about acupuncture and phytotherapy for a long time but when me and fernanda we started doing our health courses we did not talk about self-care and today we talk about it in a discipline with second year students of medicine and nursing and in physiotherapy and we were and the first day i think we were more excited than them because we were like i really wanted to have this course when i was an undergrad and today when i'm in a graduation course and i talk about the importance of taking care of your emotions during the graduation process people go to me and they're like i really wanted to talk about this in the first year of my graduation course, not in the last one as I'm having contact, because I had burnout, I had depression, I had lots of things, and I did not know that other people were having this. So I think it is awakening process, as Fernanda said, but now we are seeing this in the academia, and mm -hmm. we are seeing this in the working places, because people have been asking us to talk with their employees about self-care. And this is something that for us is amazing to see. And especially with a pandemic, I think it accelerated a little more this process because we, people would be talking about self-care, but then pandemic, people be, need to be at home, no lots of social care, not of distractions. And then people be like, okay, I need to be able to, you know, hang along with myself and to be okay with me and my time at home and the way I eat, the way I behave. So people look at this more and they are trying more complementary therapies. They are trying more to understand their own being and they are looking for self-care, understanding self-healing. We have documentaries, you know, about self-healing Netflix and people from very good universities. And especially these uh, projects that I've talked about, um, the evidence maps that really help and one of um, our materials, we present a uh, concessioners and healing institutes that identified the institutes that are researching energetic and bio um, devices, biomedical devices. They have over 240 biomedical devices to understand energy and healing and process. So um, it is a very interesting time for us. A lot of challenges, but a lot of work that people mm -hmm. are recognizing doing. So thank you for your question, Paula. Yes. yes, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I think it's interesting because your methods, uh, uh, the people need to be engaged in your own uh, self-development. So, but I think many people uh, doesn't have this kind of confidence. It's not up to me to, to do this. I, I don't have skills to do this, but the doctor did. So that the people have to change the mind uh, to, to be engaged. They will, in the, the, they will the, have to find that the only, the only person that can do healing is ourselves to ourselves, right? Yes. There is only one healing, is self-healing. So yeah. thank you uh, so much. people need to, to, to find the way to, to that truth, right? It's all about yourself, you doing it to you. There's a point in the book we say that health professionals are 
uh, specialized in health and disease, but not about you. Mm -hmm. And you have general knowledge about health and diseases, but you are specialized in yourself. Mm -hmm. So we and go it, together. Each person is a, is a different person. And if you don't know yourself, it's very difficult for even for the best physicians to take care of you. I remember, for instance, I have uh, what is called in English RSI, repetitive strain injuries in both arms for working too much, too many hours, right? In, in uh, Portuguese, it's called LER, right? And the first time I had it was in 2007. I went to the doctor and she didn't know what it was. And she said, oh, maybe when you were sleeping, you know, there was something in, in, your, in your shoulder. And I said, no, no, it's not bad. <laughs> And then I bought an anatomy book and I showed her, this is the nerve that is causing me the pain. And she was, wow, <laughs> because she had no idea what, what it was. And was, this is the nerve and it pinches here and here and here. And that is what is causing me 24 hours, you know, what we call 24-7 pain. And one of the good things also in the system in, in the UK is like, uh, the doctors themselves, they already know, they don't allow anyone, I mean, each person is free to do whatever they want, but they don't, they tell you, they, they have films, they show you videos and stuff. You shouldn't be taking any medicine for pain more than two weeks. If it's more than two weeks, it's wrong. You have to move, move, do, you know, go to the hospital or something and do physiotherapy or, you know, find out other ways because it's not okay to take uh, painkillers uh, on a daily basis. And they don't want people also to get addicted and things like that. So things are changing, but you guys are contributing to the change. This is very, very good, very beautiful. Any yeah. other questions? We still have time for this more. I, I would like to raise a question regarding the writing process. I think you have such an interesting topic that we can go on for hours and hours talking about the, the, the topic per se. I would be interesting to know, uh, therefore, that you're writing together, right? And you, you were talking a little bit about your process that you started writing and you complemented, and I guess also vice versa. And I, I, I was wondering how long did it take you to write the book and also to, to set up this website because you give a lot of um, um, material to the people, which I think is really great so that people can start uh, really working with the book so they can have the book, but also working with the material that you provide. I think this is really awesome. And I was also wondering if you plan to update the material. Uh, thank you. Yes. Um, so we, it took us around, we started writing the book uh, actually in 2015, the idea came because I had just finished PhD and me and Fernando would be talking about patients and uh, cases and situations and the way we understood our own health. And we were like, we need to start writing it down. And people invited us to write some scientific articles for some conferences and some journals. And we were like, okay, we should go this way. So it was a long process, like six years we did take to write it down, everything. But as you said, uh, we, did, we, did, we do not live in the same cities. So I'll get vacation and spend a week at over Fernanda's house and then we'll be working on the book or we'll get some time in our uh, parents' house during vacation. We'll be like, okay, nobody talk to us now today because we'll be doing this. And right at the end, people will be like, okay, are we going to do have some, something for like, you know, holiday and be like, no, you don't come here, we'll be studying. And then our father will come to the, we'll be working like in the table of the kitchen Dinner and table. be like, yeah, can I eat something? May I disturb Lyle? And we'll be like, okay, now we can eat and then we'll be eating. And then our husbands and we'll be like, oh, let's do something else. Let's leave them. So it, it was a family, everybody will be. So it is dedication. And Fernanda always likes to point out because I'm from the university. So I write very, 
scientific and boring way. And she'll be like, who's going to read this, Mariana? Let's make it more fun and let's make it more, you know? So we had all of this and everything. And sometimes I do this with Conscienciology. Oh, it's too much Conscienciological. So Mariana helped me. No, no, no. Let's go change this a little bit. Yes. Too much Neological. Let's, you know, and it was a very interesting process and everything. And about the updates, that's why we did the website, because we want people to share with us our, their stories. And we wanted to upload the material as we are doing. So we had the first presentation and then the last presentation about the book. So people can see this and uh, understand how it's going. And why we are doing the course now, it's because we want people to, you know, get on their hands for, we'll be the 10 meetings and then people will be able to understand all the process and then we see their presentations about the canvas. And then if they allow, we want to upload this material at the website so people can look at other people's canvas and be like, oh, I never tried this. Oh, oh, this is tough. How deep did they go to People understand? will learn a lot from that. Yeah, yes, when you so. when you see other people's cases, oh look at that, oh look at that. Yes. I think it will be very, very mm. rich for everyone. Awesome. So, thank that's you. That's our expectation. Thank you. Thank you. So anyone, any more questions? Feel free. If not, we are, you know, just past one minute at the time, that's not, not a problem. So again, um, if you want to say, you know, your final, <laughs> final sayings about it, you know, feel free. Uh, on, my, on my part, I want to thank you again very much for your presence here. It was very rich. I love the subject. <laughs> and uh, I'm, I'm very happy for that. You know, I'm very happy for you and for all of us to have the opportunity of having this book out and uh, doing we are not i think not even being able to see this is just a tip of the iceberg we are not being able to see how much this is going to help to help how many people you know across you know around the world especially now that we have the book in english so i'm very happy with that thank you very much to you too thank you i'm very grateful to it was really a really pleasure, pleasure to be here. We already have the book in English, and um, I hope in some weeks we will have the book, an uh, ebook in English too. And I think it will help. And we have the launch in twenty third of or the official launch of the self care the, book in English yeah, on the twenty third. Yeah, on the twenty third, and we are already preparing the translation for Spanish. So a lot of work and we, are, <laughs> uh, we have some uh, background about uh, uh, working, how to say, working too much in our family. It's a working character. too much. Yeah. yeah. A little yeah. bit of workaholism going a on. Little, a little workaholism <laughs> in the family. A little bit. We, yeah. we, we fight against it, but it's yeah, okay. Sometimes obviously. it helps. So yeah. neutral. it's something mm -hmm. I fight as well. So yeah, <laughs> we need to pay attention to this. Yeah, could be neutral sometimes, and yeah. not just neg negative. So thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And it's always a great opportunity to share with all of you. And please share with us if you feel like it. So if you want to send us email through the website or share your canvas or talk to us about your experience about self-care. And this is why we did it. And it's always a great opportunity to be here and talk about the book and see all these upcoming possibilities that has been occurring because of the book. So thank you very much for having this time to be with us. Thank you. Thank you too. Okay, see you uh, in, uh, not in August. We are not going to have the Bridge Writers in August because in August we are going to have uh, the International Weekend from the 12th to the 14th um, of August. We are going to have the International Weekend with several activities, uh, among which um, the edition, the new edition of the International Journal of Conscienciology, our new uh, journal 
and also uh, we will be presenting all the books that are being launched this year in English, Romanian and Spanish. And um, the Bridge Writers will return in October. So see you, everyone. Thank you for coming and see you until next time. Bye bye. Okay. <laughs>